This is a game in the Bat Chat 25T, the uh, French tier 10 medium, uh, really fast tank, it has a clip, uh, not much armor. Uh, and this is on airfield, and uh, one of the things that I wanted to show on airfield was sort of in the in the opening. You can spot through um, to basically the F line uh, on this west spawn or this E line on this uh, east spawn um, from the center. From either side you can do it, um, and if your artillery is paying attention they can get shots in here. Of course in this game there is no artillery, but it's always nice to have intel about what's being sent in which directions, and so it's a, it's a pretty decent um, play in a, in a fast tank to get some early intel there. And all you really have to do is just drive up there and it's sort of like on Prokhorovka or anything else, just stick your turret over and see what you can see. Come on, always, you know, 20, 30 seconds into the game, you want to see how your team is dispersing. We actually have a pretty even disbursement. Um, we don't quite have that many people on the uh, the, on the north as we'd like. We, we've got a lot of people on the south, including uh, some heavies, um, which will be interesting to see how they play that. And we know they have their E100 in the middle, uh, and unfortunately their E100 spotted me. Uh, it's not normally where you see an E100. Um, so I couldn't stay out there to continue to spot the F-line without risking a little bit, especially once they get like mediums and light tanks up into this ledge area here in that sort of E5. And so we have, we see they have their E3 in the back and there's a pattern up front. Not, not too worried about that quite yet. It's a trap! So it looks like we're putting some pressure on down here. These two guys moved across. So I want to I wanna be able to help them by keeping these guys in the middle occupied, keeping people from moving across to, to deal with them. They've still got a lot of their guys on the north. Um, we've got uh, some guys, but they're back here. Um, that's not really helpful for our guys that are on the north here. You always want to have your gun in the game, if, if at all possible. So I know that I have an M103 and E100 in front of me, and then a Conqueror in the base. It's a trap! So these guys are really trying to deal with this E100 right now, like their E3 really isn't pressuring our guys too much. Um, and I want to be able to try to get this M103 down if I can. It's a trap. And I basically, <laughs> what I'm doing in this area is, you'll notice that I'll try to keep something between myself and that Conqueror. So that the Conqueror doesn't get free shots on me if he's looking in my direction. So now it's just the E100 there that needs to go down, and that's the last guy that's that's sort of left in the middle. We're, we're sort of losing on that north side. Uh, we still have this waffle back here, which isn't really helpful to, to any of our guys, unfortunately. Most of our guys are alive on the south area, though, which is good. I, I just need to try to clip out this E100 if I can. Again, I want to keep something between myself and where that conqueror is. And so we're losing on this north side now. They're starting to clear it out a little bit. We've cleared out this middle area here, uh, but they're starting to shift some people over, like this IS-7, like that IS-8. Uh, the Conqueror still really hasn't moved from his position. We haven't completely lost this north though, so that's something I want to try to salvage if, if at all possible. And the problem with the bat chat, of course, even though it's nice to have the clip, um, it's between clips you're just kind of waiting around a lot of times. Joli 
And so that only leaves an IS-3 in that E5 on the north, so I'm hoping those guys can hold it for at least a little bit. At least until we can finish clearing out this side. So that Conqueror has started to come down off of their ramp. Um, so they're still, right, these guys who have pushed off, pushed across in the early game have done a good job of staying alive, which is good. And it's, it's really just my job to try to clear off as many of these guys as possible to keep them from uh, uh, continuing to put pressure on them. It's going to make their job a little bit easier. We're still getting cleared out on the north a bit, uh, but it's uh, slowed down. It's a trap! And so we know we still have the E3 on this side, and the E3 finally dropped down, and he's going that way. We've lost our north now, though. Um, our waffle is still in the back. And it's, uh, you know, almost six minutes into the game. I only have one shot left in the clip, so I just shoot at the E5 there. And then whenever you're clipping against tanks, um, you always want to move away from them, uh, if at all possible. I came over here because I thought I might be able to help our 113. Uh, it's a he's struggling against this medium tank a little bit. I'm just trying to prevent him from getting himself shot. Unfortunately, I'm not loaded in time to actually help him. And see how this 140 and this E5 are close together? I want to be able to move away from that. I don't want to fight them together. If the 140 wants to chase me away from the E5, that's to my advantage. Uh, it's not to my advantage to fight them both at, one, at the same time. And the nice thing about the bat chat is that you can basically outrun every tank in the game. So you can dictate a lot of the engagements. So I know that this E3 is starting to clear out through this side. And I'm fairly certain these guys are going to struggle against him a little bit, so I'm shifting over to um, flank the E3, shoot the E3 uh, for these guys. And so I see their E5 and the 140 are still separated. I could still jump the 140 right here and kill him because he's he, the E5 is too far away to actually support him, uh, but I would take a couple shots of damage there um, and might make it, it might endanger me from actually uh, engaging the E5 later. I'd rather, you know, if the 140 wants to press me, I'd rather um, face him in a situation where uh, it's just him against me. So I'm going to go group up with my, my waffle over here, and then you'll notice that I don't reload until I get over by the waffle when I know that I'm relatively safe. And then what I don't want to do here is I don't, I don't want to hide in the back. I, I want to have some sort of vision control. I want to know where they're coming from and I want to know... Uh, I still want to be in a position where I can cover our waffle though. Uh, so I'm going to set up in the middle over here so I can, I can watch them if they come over through the middle. I can watch them if they come over the top. I can watch them if they come over the south. The waffle can spot them if they come around on the north and I can still just shift back or forth to cover the waffle. But we're able to see where their tanks are, which is always a, a huge benefit. Having intel is, is incredibly important. So I know that they're both cutting up north, which suggests that the E5 is also up there. It's a trap! So I know that that shot make, brings that 140 down to one shot that'll hold them in place at least for a little bit. And I know they're going to try to backdoor the waffle here. I, our waffle doesn't really understand it, but I know that they're going to come out over on this side. Um, either that or over on top of the ledge in that E7 area. It's just a matter of, uh, of timing. And our waffle, I think that was the first shot that our waffle was taking in this game. Uh, and that was uh, nine minutes into the game. And the 140 shoots our waffle, so I know that he's out here. It's a trap! 
And we know the 268 was up on the ledge in that uh, E7 area. So that's just a, a simple matter. I know I can take a shot from the from the 268, so all I gotta do is just reload, drive up there, and shoot him. And that'll be the game, uh, regardless of what happens with the waffle. Uh, for some reason, the 268 decides that it's a good idea to charge the waffle, which, again, uh, it's not really to his advantage uh, to do something like that. Interestingly, if, if the 268 did not ram the waffle, he probably would have been able to kill him because the waffle uh, bounced or missed at least one of the shots. Um, but them's the brakes. Got to be careful on the 268. You know, I don't think you want to charge in that specific situation. I think you want to poke, get a shot, and, and then just try to back off until you reload. Um, the, the brawling with the loaded waffle is not to your advantage. Um, you want to try to you know, if you're forced to, to engage in those types of situations, you want to make sure that you can uh, be in a situation where you can at least get one for one shot. Um, so anyhow, uh, in the early going, you can play this middle here to spot uh, from both sides, really. And if you have artillery, especially if your artillery is on the ball, then you can very easily get shots on the slower heavies that come through there. You just need to make sure that you're not overexposing yourself where you can get shot from the bases or uh, from <coughs> their artillery, depending on, on how they, they set up. And then after that, the rest of this game was just um, recognizing that our team had pushed across this south area here. They had some tanks on this sort of mid uh midline here, this sort of FG line, and it was important to try to keep those guys in place where they couldn't just push over here and, and push against these guys. Um, and that allowed us to, to get a lot of damage because those guys were fairly preoccupied with our team down there. The, those guys on that south and that J4 area did a pretty good job of staying alive, uh, and that's, that's really important in those types of situations. Um, and that creates that creates uh, shots for everyone else on the team who's who's willing or aware enough to be in position to to take advantage of it. Right, it creates shots on that, like that Tiger Two that was back there, there the Conqueror, those guys that are on the lower plateau, uh, and and everything as well. We didn't really have that much on the north, so it was just a matter of time before we were going to lose the north. Um, I don't think our north played it that well. We had three guys camping back here in the sort of D nine D zero early area early. That's never really what you what you want to see. I, I, Ideally, you see um, people come out a little bit earlier than that. But won the game, so that's what's important. Uh, and when we look at the stats, um, so we were able to do a lot of damage, mostly because um, we we kept our gun relatively active. It was a it was a reasonably long game, right? It was it was a ten minute game, uh, so we got twenty three shots, which uh, is not a whole lot um, considering that uh, we're in a bat chat, something where if we were in a continuous fire tank, we probably would have gotten a lot more shots. Uh, but some of those things would have been more difficult, um, like uh, it would have uh, when we clipped out the E one hundred, for example, um, that would have been a, a little bit more difficult. But uh, the Bat Chat is still a, a really good tank as long as you try to utilize the, the clip and the, the speed and the ability for it to relocate. Yeah. And that Waffle only got five shots. That was very sad. But he made his shots count at the end uh, when that 268 charged him, so that that is good for him. Um, Otherwise, uh, yeah, so that's about it for the bat chat and airfield and sort of using the time between clips to, to relocate, uh, to move away from your enemies or, or to get in position to use your next clip. Um, and that's something that's, that I think is really important with these types of tanks. Um, so I hope that was helpful and thanks for watching.